Ever wondered where time comes from? Welcome to a story about time. Part one, the first clocks. All the time that we humans were hunter-gatherers living out in the wild, which is almost all of the time we humans have existed, we used the sun, moon and stars to tell the time was passing. We knew it was day cause... And we knew it was night cause... Some people got even smarter and looked at the changing patterns of where the moon, sun and stars were in the sky to count months and years passing. But of course, they weren't called months or years yet. The first ever clocks that we know of were sundials. You put a stick in the ground and the movement of its shadow shows you time passing. Or you use a giant rock if you're in one of those big new things called cities. Why does the shadow move? Because the sun moves, right? It travels across the sky between rising and setting. Um, actually, the sun doesn't move at all. Not in our solar system, at least. We move as the Earth spins around, so it looks like the sun is moving. Anyway, sundials. Woo! The ancient Egyptians loved them and built massive ones in their cities. What could possibly go wrong? The ancient Chinese sussed this out and invented water clocks, where you know how it has passed by looking at how high the water has got. Well, how long is that? As long as a bit of a day. Nobody's invented hours yet. Oh wait, our time stopped. It was the Egyptians who first split the days and nights up into 12 hours each. Because the length of a day depends on the time of year, a daytime hour was much longer in the summer than in the winter. Why did they choose 12? Probably because 12 split much more neatly into halves and quarters than 10s do. The Egyptians learned this from the Babylonians, who had a number system based on sixes, not tens like the Egyptians or the Arabic system that we use today. We think this is why people decided there would be 60 minutes in an hour and 60 seconds in a minute. But we didn't invent anything anywhere near accurate enough to measure minutes and seconds for thousands of years. The shadows on sundials weren't that precise, nor were the rising water levels in water clocks. People in Europe started to burn candles or ropes to measure time passing, but these didn't last very long, so you needed lots, and it was hard to keep track. Plato, the ancient Greek, made a water clock into an alarm clock. It stopped him from sleeping all day, but it didn't tell him the time. About a thousand years ago, monks in Europe made the first ever mechanical clocks, with weights and springs. They made them big, and they made them dong loudly to make sure people went to church. But they still weren't accurate enough to show minutes or seconds yet, and didn't keep going very well. People thought these clocks were kind of neat though, and they tried long and hard to make better ones.